This is it. It's my final argument for it. I'm gonna take your word. What's up, guys? Hello, Pencil here, and here to do a breakdown and discussion on whether or not Yuji can just flat out do soul damage. Not the pseudo soul damage, not some run run soul damage. I'm talking that real, proper, hard, or impossible to heal with RCT style soul damage thanks to his knowledge of the soul and specifically his interactions and statements around the Sukuna battle and how he dealt with Megami and Sukuna being fused and all that and what it means if he can do it and what it means if he can't do it. All that and more shall be covered in this video, so let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me. Are you ready? Are you uh, three, two, one, go? What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact: I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact: Eugene Tadori is divisive. Let's just say that on every single level, but especially scaling wise, and especially ability wise, and especially scaling ability wise, because of the vagueness surrounding him. Now, if you're like me and you're just a little bit confuzzled and confused about Itadori suddenly being top one in the verse, as a lot of people are claiming, or even hypothetically being top three, or even hypothetically being top five. Well, admittedly, I can, I can see many arguments for top five. Once again, it, it, I'll, I'll talk about Final Yuji and where I personally scale him. There's a hundred video I do want to react to, so I want to, like, I want to look at that. So I may, I may do it in that video. I may make a separate video. I'm probably gonna make a separate video too. But still, overall, Yuji has been divisive in scaling for the longest time, but especially now that the series is over, he's extra divisive. Especially considering he didn't seem to get as much as a lot of people were hoping for by the end of the series. No Fuga, no name domain, no nothing. But with it being the case, one of the most decisive aspects about Yuji is what can he actually do? especially with his newly developed curse techniques. Obviously, we do not see much, if any, of blood manipulation after a while, but the main thing that's got everybody's attention is that cleave, that ability to just... And dismantles, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But ultimately, the real question that everyone has, or at least I have, and I've seen many others have, and or just state, is this soul damage specifically one type of soul damage and i'm talking about that soul damage that is mentioned in chapter 252 with the advent of the heavenly restricted beast of the zenin maki zenin <coughs> this wound is healing slower than the others when someone who ah, english when someone who can observe the soul will soul split soul katana Reverse curse technique doesn't usually heal the wound. Repairing the soul's shape requires comprehending the soul's contours. The soul's two souls inhabit Sukuna's body, so he was aware of the contours of his own soul, much like with Yuji Itadori, but he couldn't perfectly adapt to reverse curse technique functioning differently than usual, while suffering the effects or the after effects of his fight with Santo de Gojo. So this is the big thing. Soul damage in JJK is particularly effective. Inverse, and I'd say even crossverse. Soul damage is just typically useful. It's just that JJK stats typically aren't good enough that any of the characters with soul damage can like really do it too much in other verses. But still, soul damage is huge. It's one of the main reasons why Maki Zenin and Toju Fushiguro themselves are extremely dangerous. It's one of the main reasons why Itadori Yuji is assumed to be extremely dangerous. And it's one of the main reasons why Mahito, a character who perished less than halfway through the narrative, is still brought up in top 10 discussions all the time, simply because soul damage and messing with it is that good. However, the question really becomes, can Yuji himself do it? Can big Itadori do it himself? Can he damage the soul in the same way that SSK can? Now, if you're going to say, we see him do it, no we don't. Never do we see him actually damage a soul in the same way that SSK does. And never is it mentioned that the, any of the wounds that he inflicts on Sukuna are healing slower than the others, like with Maki's wound left by SSK. It is very specifically unique to SSK that the damage done by it to Sukuna was harder for him to heal. Eventually, once he got his RCT output back, he was able to overcome the limitations, as it's naturally explained here, only since he had two souls in him, he was able to figure out the contours of his own soul and then apply RCT in that unique fashion after he finally got it restored. And he was even he healing throughout the battle, so he was slowly but surely figuring out the entire time. And naturally, someone like Yuji Tadori would be able to do the same thing, thanks to him once having two souls in himself, and obviously having the outline and comprehension of the soul. A character like Yuki Sukumo should be able to do this, a character like Maki and Toji should be able to do this. Well, actually, maybe not Maki and Toji, because it's unknown if they can look into their own souls. 
Their souls, Toji notes that his soul is especially strong, and his body is weird, to the point where it could overwhelm a soul. Once again, the heavenly restriction uses perceiving their own souls and healing from soul damage is actually kind of vague. We have no idea how that would work. Though presumably it probably wouldn't work, considering, like, soul perception seems to be a requirement of having two souls, or at least having once had two souls inside you. So, it's a little strange, but then again, Maki sees my soul, and it says, it's super duper weird. But, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Yuji, and whether or not he can do the same thing. So, in text, he never does it. In fact, it's always specifically specified that something devious, something diabolical, something concerning is going on with Yuji, but it's specifically not SSK style soul damage. Thanks to Miki Fushiguro's memory, I know the brat. Ah, I know the brat's curse technique is copy. They want to keep me, my arms and mouth busy by making me keep using Hollow Wicker Basket as a means of countering the can't miss attack. Probably the angel's curse technique that comes with the domain and to attack with them. Limited curse technique copy, which appears to only activate within the domain. The boy will deliver a blow that captures the soul and tears Mimi Fushiguro's body from my body. How nice. Everyone has a role. So, that's what Megami Fushiguro's state was, and that's how Itadori Yuji reacts specifically to that state. With his knowledge of the Soul Book, and specifically his experience with Mahito and the experience with Sukuna, he's able to go in and figure out how to seize the soul of Ruin Sukuna, specifically dragging him out from the body of Megami Fushiguro by consistently making contact. We even see an involved version of this where he specifically starts using dismantles in order to reach the same effect, to the point where Sukuna admits... Wake up, Fushi girl! This attack is directly targeting the curse technique. He's driving this mantle into my into the boundary between my soul and Megami Fushiguro's. Due to a binding vow, narrowing the curse technique's target, it rends the souls even more effectively than an actual blow. If that keeps hitting me, I won't be able to maintain this body and I'll lose. But bada bing bada boom, it doesn't if it can't hit me, it doesn't matter. So, what does this all imply? Once again, attacking the boundary between a dual soul being not attacking the soul of either being now you may be wondering okay that's man i know all this what does it have to do with yuji doing soul damage just because we haven't seen it does that mean he can't do it just because the narrator hasn't highlighted it doesn't mean he can't do it just because it is a different application of soul damage does that mean he can't do it? Because, naturally, the biggest example that a lot of people would leap to is Mahito himself, the origin of this evolved ability that Yuji Tadori develops. A lot of people believe that since he was able to damage Mahito solely by attacking his soul, see what I did there? Solely by attacking his soul. <laughs> but essentially, since he was able to do that, then he should be able to damage souls. The only reason I'm a little bit hesitant with just using Mahito as the reason for him being able to do soul damage is because no one else in the entire series knows that their soul is getting damaged by Yuji's regular punches. Not even Sukuna does, and he gets hit by awakened Yuji's regular punches all the time, even before this. Specifically, if you go back to chapter 215 or 216, where we first see what I like to call liberated Yuji, the Yuji that's free of Sukuna's influence, or at least free of the Sukuna fingers that were once inside his body, and he gets the spiral eyes, he hits Sukuna. And Sukuna does not note any sort of soul damage. And he's one of the few characters who would be able to tell. And of course, there are a bunch of other people that Yuji hits, but they can all heal their wounds with no problem at all. So it seems like the reason Mahito's soul was taking damage is because Yuji was subconsciously attacking it, which is why I personally believe all beings with two souls in their body can damage Mahito, as that seems to be the only condition that he himself lays out. But, okay... That's just the original subconscious example. What about this active application? Why would he not be able to do it? There's honestly no reason. I'll be completely real with you. The main reason why I'm mostly okay with it is because I can see the vision that a lot of people are laying out. Essentially, the argument is, since he's able to so precisely target the boundary between two souls, what's stopping him from just targeting a soul itself? The reason he wouldn't do that against Sukuna specifically is because Megami and Sukuna's souls were like this. And thusly, if he were trying to, let's say, swing his fist at the combined soul pair, even if he did hit Sukuna's, he would at the same time damage Megami's soul, which would likely destroy Megami's soul faster as Sukuna's soul is described to be extremely powerful. And thusly, by attacking the barrier between and slowly unlinking them, the moment that became free, then Yuji could freely attack Sukuna's soul. Of course, when Sukuna finally is broken free of Megami Fushi Girl, he immediately disintegrates. So, like, we don't know how that would have worked out. But still, that seems to be it. 
So, does Yuji have soul damage? I'll say possibly. The only reason I'm so hesitant is because we don't see it. And if we start assuming characters with lots of soul knowledge should be able to do soul damage, then all of Sugita's attacks should be soul damage. He should know way more about the soul than Yuji Tadori, right? I mean, he figured out how to split his own soul multiple parts by experiencing it one time. He's a master at doing it. So he should know it, right? Oh, and Yuki Sukumo wrote the soul book, so all of her damage should be soul-based, right? Oh, but Maki and Toji can also perceive the souls, literally perceive the souls, better than anyone else, even the souls of inanimate objects. So they should be able to do permanent soul damage, even without SSK, right? Maybe not against cursed spirits, as was specifically pointed out. I made that mistake. They cannot do it to cursed spirits because they don't have cursed energy, but at least for sorcerers, they should be able to do permanent soul damage, right? And the same thing for anybody who happens to, you know, I don't know, be able to do damage to Mahito, aka attack his soul, they should also have soul damage. That's the thing. It's a slippery slope of assumptions. Naturally, you could make the argument that since Yuji's better at soul attacking than all these people, then he could just do it while they can't. But it just seems so iffy. Especially when you could argue other characters should be more knowledgeable on the soul. Big Jaku, the guy who captured the souls of how many different people for the Culling Games and started altering the souls of how many different people for the Culling Games after using Alpha Transfiguration, you can tell me his attacks don't do soul damage, but Yuji's do? The guy who had a month to figure out how to do it based on the experience with one guy he fought like twice. Versus the guy who'd been messing with souls and reincarnation for literally over a thousand years. Kenny can't do soul damage, but Yuji can. You see my dilemma? Like, ultimately, I'm going to make a poll on this. I'm going to see. If you guys think that Yuji can just do soul damage, Kenny just never shows it to us due to the extrapolating circumstance of Sukuna and Megami's coexistence, and naturally Yuji just did not feel comfortable doing it, but he let Maki do it because that was the main way she could have damaged Sukuna, then that's fine. I'll leave it um, in the explanation video I'm writing about Final Yuji and the scaling video I'm writing about Final Yuji. Then, bada bing, bada boom, I'll just give him the due credit. He can do soul damage. That does knock him up, like, one or two spots. And it does make him extra effective against certain characters. It essentially flips the Akari match upon its head. If you think that Yuji can't do soul damage, then it's highly unlikely that he ever beats Akari who's in jackpot and consistently looking jackpots. Like, it's just literally impossible because Yuji could never do enough damage to Akari in order to do anything lethal to him. He just literally couldn't. Even Cleaves and Dismantles wouldn't do anything. But if you give Yuji soul damage, then that match kind of becomes a wash because we don't know if... But then again, it goes into the assumption round. Can Akari heal the soul automatically with infinite curse energy? I don't know. No idea. But that's the thing. If we go with that idea, then certain matchups change for Yuji a lot. Matchups get closer and you can definitely slide Yuji real, real high. But if you're like me and believe, hey, never sated, never saw it, can't happen, then Yuji, he kind of stays in, like, top 10 and loses to some characters that he probably wouldn't lose to if he had soul damage. Don't get me wrong, Yuji's bag is still relatively deep enough and is still most certainly a certain type of broken, if you know what I'm talking about. You don't just be running around with things like cleave and not be called a little bit broken, if you know what I'm talking about. But specifically, the inability to do soul cleaves... Or soul dismantles, aka range soul attacks, it's a little it's a little less effective. So that's the question I have for you. Do you think that Yuji can do SSK style soul damage, which is very difficult to heal, which you can only heal if you have two souls inside you and understand the soul contours of your own soul? Or do you think that Yuji Tadori can only target the boundary and thusly he is highly specialized against characters like Sukuna and any sort of incarnated sorcerer? Please let me know all that and more in the comment section down below. I have to thank you so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little case so you don't miss out on every video that comes to the channel. Also, also do happen to have a Patreon down below where you support me for as low as one. Hit them one dollar. These things are exclusive videos, early content, and more. If you now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. So those perks include the live reactions, series of the series I happen to review, and if you very soon all my videos, and if you come into a Patreon or join my member, you can order whatever video you want. Also, also, also do a link to my co-fi in the description down below. You can drop five beans for a short video, twenty five beans for a long video, or any beans at all. Any support is always greatly appreciated. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Other Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members Zara, Greyhound, Eternal Flame, NMA, Real Rare, Red Wolf, 4765, Astro, Brandon Payne, G Prosper, and Glacier XZ.
And I'd like to give a thank you to our $5 patrons, Midnight Lord 21, Kevin Encarnacion, Sean, Igneal Lind, and A plus A. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $7 members, Fine and Austin Wimberly, A Uchiha, along with Yuki Ally. And I'd like to give a big ol' thank you to our $10 members, Robbie Uchiha, Jay Warrior, and AZ Void. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $10 patrons, Overlord Zero, Waki Munoz, Waki Munoz, and Idemo Kami. And I'd like to give a final, giga, legendary, superhuman, beyond the hounds of reality, thank you to our that guy with a pencil tier patron, <laughs> okay. Calvin Elder.